Hi and welcome back to another video, again RTX 5090 content, content that didn't make it into my launch video because it was already too much. We will talk about a PCIe 5.0. So the RTX 5090 is the first NVIDIA consumer GPU that is made with PCIe 5.0. And I was testing this pretty much on the latest specs or latest stuff that you can get, 9800X 3D on an X870E motherboard, so native PCIe 5.0. But the question is, is this really necessary or will also PCIe 4.0 do the job or maybe even 3.0? That will be the topic for today's video. This video is brought to you by the Endolfi Navis AIOs, which are now available at a significantly lower price than before. For example, you can get the simple Navis F240 starting at 5990 and the powerful F360 ARGB starting at 8990. With a quiet pump featuring a ceramic bearing and pre-installed Fluctus fans, the price performance ratio is outstanding. You can find all the details in the link in the description. The general question is if stepping down from 5.0 to 4.0 or even 3.0 will result in a performance loss. And this could even be the case if you're using latest gen hardware. For example, a 9800X 3D, it could be that you're running an older AM5 motherboard or an AM5 motherboard that simply doesn't have a PCIe 5.0 slot. And for example, a lot of people are running a 5800X 3D, which is still a fairly fast CPU. And this could sit on either a 3.0 or a 4.0 motherboard. So I think this could be quite relevant. It will neglect the fact that if you're using an older CPU, you might bottleneck the 5090. So we will just test this with the 9800X 3D and step down from 5.0, 4.0, 3.0 and test different scenarios, different games to see the performance impact. But we will first look at the RTX 4090 Founders Edition, which is running natively at PCIe 4.0. To check the PCIe speed, simply open GPU-C and check the bus interface. And for example, right here we have 4.0 x16, but it's currently running at x16 1.1. And this is one of the power measurement yeah, features, as you can also read in the prompt that pops up. That is something you have to keep in mind. So for that, to test it, it is important to click on the question mark, start render test and make sure to start it in full screen. And now you can observe on the bottom left of the screen that the card is running at the intended X16 4.0. And for this video, we actually don't need the 4090 Founders Edition because we can just lower the PCIe speed in BIOS for the 5090. But while testing this, I noticed something odd. 3DMark has dedicated PCIe bandwidth tests if we scroll down. On the bottom left, we can see about 27 to 30 FPS and on the bottom right, about 26 gigabyte per second. And the output at the end is about 27 gigabyte per second. And now we will repeat the same thing again with the 5090 Founders Edition. So same thing again in GPU-C checking it's 5.0 intended, but currently because of power saving running at 1.1. But again, on the bottom left in the feature test, we can test that the card is running under load with 5.0 x16. And back into the feature test, we can suddenly see about 150 FPS and also like 120 gigabyte per second. And it even tells us now that it's supposed to be 119 gigabyte per second. I then also decreased the performance, went down to Gen 4, and I still saw about 115 to 120 gigabyte per second, went down to Gen 3 and still saw about 70 gigabyte per second. And this doesn't make sense because the theoretical maximum of X16 Gen 5 should be about 60 to 63 gigabyte per second. So we see about twice as what should be possible with Gen 5 and switching back to Gen 4, we see about quadruple to what should be possible. So yeah, something seems to be wrong with this test. I already emailed 3 Mark about it, didn't hear back yet, but it seems like just a synthetic test about the bandwidth it seems to be not possible with the 5090. There seems to be some bug in there. That means that we just have to do yeah, plain performance testing. In BIOS, we can go to advanced all the way down to onboard device configuration, again, all the way down to PCIe link speed. And here I will drop down from five to four to three and test individual speeds or performance in benchmarks. Already with the 4090, it was quite well known that dropping from 4.0 to 3.0, you often only lost like two or 3%. And knowing that the 5090 is typically 25 to 30% faster than the 4090, it is kind of to expect that, that also here dropping down from 5.0 to 4.0 should only result in a small performance penalty. For that we will first look into 3 d Mike Speedway. 
Dropping from 5.0 to PCIe 4.0 only results in a performance loss of 2%. So we're going down from 146 to 143 FPS on average. And I would say in any game you wouldn't even be able to notice this. Interestingly, the power consumption also drops a little bit from 551 to 538. My wild guess would be that 4.0 is just a little bit lighter on the GPU or, or some controller. We saw similar behavior with M.2 SSDs, for example. If you plug a 5.0 M.2 into a 4.0 slot, it also consumes slightly less power. So I think a similar thing also applies here. Interestingly, though, dropping down to PCIe 3.0 didn't result in a big performance loss. We are still at 142 FPS on average. Power consumption was roughly the same as with 4.0. So even with 3.0, we only lose 3% performance in this test. In 3D Mark Speedway, a synthetic test, we saw only a very little difference, no matter if it's 5.0, 4.0 or 3.0. But how does this translate to gaming? I could observe a very similar behavior in Assassin's Creed Mirage, where both performance and also power consumption dropped a little bit. If we just look at 1% lows, the difference is very small. Even if we compare 5.0 to 3.0, it is about 1 to 2%. Only if we look at the average FPS, the difference is a little bit larger. From 5.0 to 4.0, we lose 3%. If we compare 5.0 to 3.0, we lose 6%. So that's again quite comparable to the 3D mark. Cyberpunk absolutely surprised me here. I expected this game to just be more challenging for the GPU and this way maybe result in bigger performance differences. But if we look at the average FPS, it was just the same in all three scenarios, no matter if 5.0, 4.0 or 3.0. Just if we look at the 1% lows, I could see a difference of one FPS. And to be honest, this is pretty much measurement tolerance. Only the power consumption was slightly different between 3.0, 4.0 and 5.0. And because this was not as expected, I decided to test a third game, Star Wars Outlaws being a more recent game. I thought maybe we can see bigger changes here. But again, Star Wars just confirmed my previous findings. Comparing PCIe 5.0 and 4.0, I could only see a difference of 1 FPS. And comparing 5.0 and 3.0, I could see a difference of 4%. It is absolutely possible though that there might be synthetic workloads, calculation workstation applications where the PCIe performance is more important and you might see a bigger performance impact. But at least from what I was testing now with gaming, the performance difference seems to be almost neglectable. From 5.0 to 4.0 we're losing about 2% and going down to even 3.0 we would lose another 2%. That means that, for example, if you're running a 9800X 3D and you're running a board that only has a 4.0 slot, a primary one, it is definitely not needed to upgrade to 5.0. You can definitely save some money here. That is not needed whatsoever. And even if you're running an older CPU, let's say 5800X 3D with 3.0 motherboard, it is still usable. But that is definitely also a scenario where you have to check if you might run into some CPU bottleneck. And in the end, it's also always to consider that if you're, you know, if you're running a 5090 and if you're looking for the max performance, then maybe you need PCIe 5.0. But it's just up to you to decide. But just for pure gaming, you might not be able to tell a difference between 5.0 and 4.0. That might also be important, for example, for your riser cable choice, or if you have a 4.0 riser cable, it's probably no problem just running it at 4.0 and save some money here. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.